Darcy, how long do you plan to freeload off of me and your brother's hard-earned money? You can't rely on others for lodging and financial support forever, you know. Why don't you take control of your finances and stand on your own two feet? Mom, please understand my situation. My life has just gone through major upheavals, and I'm still trying to process everything. I know it's unexpected that I moved into your house, but I promise I'll only stay here for a short time, until my baby is a little older. By that time, I'm gonna go back to work and find a place to rent for both me and Lisa. Besides, I'm not freeloading off anyone's money. I still take responsibility for my own expenses. Seriously? I'm ashamed to have a daughter like you. You're almost 40 years old and you're still a complete mess. You got divorced and were kicked out of the house by your husband, only to find out later you're pregnant with his child. What more of a loser can you be? I've already explained to you that I had no control over what happened. My husband deceitfully sold our house without my knowledge. And to make matters worse, he had been involved in an affair with another woman. Despite our divorce, Matthew is neglecting his responsibility to provide child support. No, he isn't capable of providing me with child support, to be precise. You and your husband are just as equally pathetic. What a heaven-made couple. And why can't he pay you the money? He was recently fired from his company and even imprisoned because they found out he had been misappropriating his company's funds. I thought I already told you about that. Look, Mom, I'm really in a tough situation, and I hope you can have a little sympathy for me. I'm currently looking after Lisa and searching for a new place at the same time. I promise I won't stay at your place for long. Sympathy for you? Then who will have sympathy for me? I don't care what you're going through. It's all your fault. You created your own mess. If you weren't stupid enough to marry Matthew the loser, none of that would have happened. What are you even saying? He was a nice man before we got married. So how could I have known that he would turn out to be the way he is now? Besides, you're the one who encouraged me to marry Matthew in the first place. You told me that he was a handsome man who makes a seven-figure salary and that I would be happy if I married him. Last time I checked, you were totally supportive of our marriage. So what's with this sudden change of heart? Well, about that, I can explain myself. Seriously, how was I supposed to know that Matthew would turn out to be a complete mess? He wasn't like that before. Hold on, are you attempting to place the blame on me? How dare you? Don't assume for a moment that I don't know your evil intentions when you pushed me to marry Matthew. All because you had your eyes set on his wealth, right? Don't even try to prove me wrong on this. Oh, of course, I forgot. Money grubbing is still one of your most significant defining traits, isn't it? What? Now you dare to retort with such a tone even after I generously offered you my assistance and allowed you to stay in my house? What an ungrateful woman you are! If I'd known you would turn out to be such an overwhelming burden, I would have preferred giving birth to an egg. At least an egg could serve a purpose, unlike you. Oh, well, enough about that. Just tell me exactly, when are you going to move out? I'm kind enough to let you stay in our house for a week now, so you have to move out right now. But the last time we discussed this matter, you agreed to accommodate me for at least a month. What's brought about this sudden change of mind? I don't understand. That was before I knew that you and your well-off husband had gotten a divorce. Well, change of plans. I decided that I don't want to see your ugly face in this house any longer. I only want to live with your brother, Andrew. There's no place for you here. To tell the truth, I wish you weren't my daughter at all. Now I really regret having given birth to such an utterly useless woman. I've disliked you for a long time, but now, I despise you. I want you gone. Oh, is that so? Then please explain to me why you showered me with praise and compliments when I married my affluent ex-husband Matthew. What was the reason behind all those statements like, Oh, Darcy, you're such a dependable girl. I can always rely on you. Or, 
Darcy, you've brought more happiness into my life than ever before. Let's not forget the numerous occasions when you gladly accepted luxurious clothing and jewelry from Matthew. You even shamelessly stole money from him. Lucky for you, he chose not to report you to the police when he found out about that. What's with bringing up the past? The incidents you just told me happened like ages ago, and I can't even remember any of it. For the record, I didn't steal anything from your husband. I borrowed money from him, because we were family, and it's common sense that family members help each other out in times of need. Oh, absolutely. Because apparently, in your twisted definition of family, it also entails throwing each other away when they no longer serve your selfish agendas, right? Stop trying to change the subject. I'm asking you, how long do you plan to stay in my house while you are unemployed? Do you know what adults without jobs are commonly labeled? They are often referred to as parasites, leeches, or freeloaders. Do you even realize the seriousness of the situation? Do you comprehend the financial strain you're imposing on both me and your brother? I already told you, I'm not unemployed. I'm just taking a short maternal leave to take care of Lisa, who was just born barely one week ago. And have you forgotten the fact that I'm the one who has been sending you money every month? It's also me who provides you with financial support whenever you need it, especially after dad fell ill. Now when I'm at my worst, you decide to turn your back on me and say that I'm nothing but a parasite? Wow, you really are something else, aren't you? You've been sending me money every month? Stop joking around. We all know that Andrew is the sole provider for our family. He told me everything, and he also told me how much of a terrible liar you are. I should have known this earlier. I should have stood up and protected my son against a manipulative witch like you. Wait, what? What exactly did Andrew tell you? I'm genuinely confused. I swear I've been transferring money to your bank account all this time. Haven't you been receiving those transfers? Yes, I have received them. But let's face it, that money is not even yours. It's my son's hard-earned money. You tricked him into transferring all of his money into your bank account every month so that you could send it to me, only to proudly proclaim yourself the breadwinner of the family. Tell me the truth. How much of your brother's money did you embezzle before you gave me the rest? Andrew said that? That's ridiculous. I would never do anything like that. He seriously needs to stop spreading lies about me. What on earth are you blabbing about? My son would never lie to me. You're the one who's low enough to come up with such an evil plan. Do you honestly believe that your petty act of trickery will make you a saint in my eyes? Do you expect me to be indebted to you for the money you sent, which wasn't even rightfully yours? I see right through your deception. You're just trying to take credit for your brother's hard work and gain my favoritism through deceit. Such a disgusting move. Listen, I'm the one who has been sending you money all this time, and it's my hard-earned money. I don't know how much Andrew earns a month, but he never seems to have any money of his own. In fact, he has been asking me for money for a very long time now. Every time we talk, it's always about him borrowing money from me, the money which he never returns. After a few times, I decided to stop lending him any more money. Oh, please, stop deluding yourself. How could you fabricate such a blatant lie like that? Andrew was employed at a prestigious multinational company, and he earns even more than your wealthy ex-husband ever did. There's absolutely no chance that he would stoop so low as to borrow money from a flat, broke scoundrel like yourself. A prestigious multinational company? Honestly, this is the first time I've heard of this. Andrew didn't tell me anything like that before. Of course he wouldn't tell you. If he did, you just cling to him and mooch off his paycheck. That's all you're good for, isn't it? A lazy, good-for-nothing moocher. How could you let your brother alone shoulder the financial responsibility of the household? You're such a disgrace to our family's lineage. Okay, fine. If you think Andrew has been the one sending you money all this time, then you can go ask him for it. Maybe, if you're lucky, he can send you the payment directly from his bank account. Don't even dream of asking me for financial aid anymore. To be honest, I doubt Andrew has any cents left in his bank account to send you. What? How dare you make such audacious claims about your own brother? It's quite clear that your bank account is the one running dry. Listen, you little parasite. 
I don't have time to waste on you. Figure out a way to get out of my house and don't come back. We don't tolerate your kind in this family. Darcy, you don't know how much I miss having you around. Our home isn't the same without you. Thanks for sending money to mom all this time. We wouldn't have survived without your financial support. You may not realize it, but you've been a big help to me and mom. Oh, Andrew, it's you. Good to hear that you and mom are still doing fine. We're doing fine? What do you mean by that? We're not doing fine at all. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Really? What happened? First of all, mom already quit her job, and she only earns a meager monthly pension every month. That's not even enough to cover our basic necessities. What about you? You're working for a renowned multinational corporation, so naturally you must be rolling in money, right? I bet you must have more than enough to support both yourself and our dear mom. What? Are you drunk? A renowned multinational corporation? That's the funniest joke I've ever heard. You know I'm just a humble temporary cashier at a supermarket, right? But hey, it's not just any supermarket. It's a super famous globally recognized brand with branches all over the world. So I guess we can technically say I'm working for a prestigious multinational company. Ha <laughs> well played. But seriously, where did that even come from? Well, mom spilled the beans herself. She explicitly mentioned that you earned more than Matthew ever did. Oh, absolutely. That must be it. Mom decided to quit her job because she felt incredibly financially secure. All thanks to her wealthy son. It's clear that her newfound sense of financial stability made her think, Who needs a job when I have such a prosperous child? Now, what's the story behind Mom's intriguing revelation? What? Why on earth did she go and blurt that out to you? I told her not to keep that information confidential. It was supposed to be between us. I can't believe she couldn't keep her mouth shut. Oh, and that's not all. Mom also disclosed to me that you've been taking credit for sending money to my bank account, which I then give to her. Is there any truth to that? Ma was clearly furious about that and even insulted me. We both know she's talking nonsense, right? Serious talk here. Why did you say such a thing to her? Yeah, I might have said that. But does it even matter? We're family, so your money is my money too. That's not what we should focus on right now. Look, I just got fired from my job. Seriously? I was about to compliment you on finally working again after years of unemployment. But now you're telling me you've been fired? Well, but the worst part of it all wasn't that. Thing is, I was a little drunk that day and got into a fight. I accidentally hit a customer so hard that he had to be hospitalized. Now, that customer is filing a lawsuit against me for assault and battery and asking for compensation. To top it off, the supermarket company is also suing me for a large sum of money for ruining their reputation. If I don't have enough money to pay them, I'll be put in jail. No kidding. Please, Darcy, you have to help me. I don't have anyone else to turn to. You're my only hope. You've got to be kidding me. I told you to quit drinking a long time ago. I did. I actually stopped drinking for quite some time now. It was only that one time. And what's the exact amount of money they are seeking as compensation? Well, it's not that much, just a modest $300,000. I'm sure you have that amount readily available. If not, just get it from your husband. He's a wealthy businessman after all. Don't lie to me. I know you must have pilfered a significant amount from him. Wait, are you referring to my ex-husband? Oh, and have I mentioned that he was actually kicked out from his own company and is currently serving time behind bars? Yeah, you did tell me that, but come on, don't lie to me. You must have stashed away a couple of hundred thousand dollars or even some expensive jewelry. Be honest with me, I'm your own brother. Do you think you can keep them away from me forever? Sooner or later, I'll discover them. I told you I don't have any money. Before we got divorced, Matthew secretly took all the valuable things in our house and sold them for money to finance his runaway with his mistress. 
but he was arrested by the police not long after that. But you're also working, right? Surely you have some money of your own. Tell me, where did you hide it? I couldn't find anything when I searched through your belongings the other day. What? So it was you who rummaged through my things? No wonder my room was a mess when I got back. How could you do that? You violated my privacy, you know that? So what? Listen carefully. Hand over the money or else be prepared to face the severe consequences that await you. I'm not joking around. Do you want to be beaten up like the customer I told you? No! I won't give you anything. Not even a single cent. My money is my money, and I have every right to keep it. You're the one who got yourself into this mess, so you're the one who has to get yourself out of it. So you're not gonna help me, huh? You scoundrel. Fine. If that's the way it's going to be, then I'll tell mom to kick you out of the house and toss your belongings in the trash. If you're not going to help me, then you're just a good-for-nothing woman. A complete waste of space. Mark my words. I'm gonna make you suffer like you've never done before. Darcy? Come back and gather your belongings. Do you know that they're scattered all over the place? If you don't come home at once, you'll have to collect them from the dumpster. I can't believe you're asking me to come home right now. I'm in the hospital because of you. Do you have any idea what you've done? I told you to move out as soon as possible. You are not only a parasite, but also a terrible liar. You have lied to me time and time again, and I can't stand living under the same roof with you anymore. You are such a filthy pig. I can't believe you'd badmouth your own brother like that. I was about to move out and was collecting my belongings when, out of nowhere, you slammed my face into the wall. I was dizzy and bleeding from my nose and forehead, but I was able to call 911 and they took me to the hospital. Why did you do such a vile thing to me? I told you I was leaving and never coming back, just like you wanted. What else did you want me to do? Now you're asking me that question? You're the one to blame, you filthy two-faced snake. You accused your brother of being kicked out of his company and getting involved in a brawl, which led to him facing a prison sentence. How could you make up such a lie about your brother? Is it because you're envious of him? Oh, please, don't make me laugh. Why should I be envious of that egotistical freeloader? Watch your mouth and show some respect to your brother. You only got this far in life thanks to me and your brother, not because you're capable of accomplishing anything on your own. I know you envy Andrew, and it's totally understandable. He's intelligent, has a thriving career, and earns a great income. Do you know why I gave birth to you? It's because I thought you would become a talented person like your brother. But no, you turned out to be a complete failure, and I regret ever bringing you into this life. What are you even talking about? I didn't say anything that wasn't true. I even showed you the messages that Andrew sent me, in which he admitted his wrongdoing. Stop lying to me. If Andrew sent you those messages, then why aren't they on his phone? I checked his phone and I didn't find anything. Pathetic. You're so desperate to frame your brother that you're willing to lie to me, huh? Are you really that ignorant, Phoebe? Of course the messages didn't show on his phone. He deleted them. How else would you explain it? So now you're calling me ignorant, huh? It seems like the lesson I taught you last time didn't go through so well. If you keep behaving like a spoiled brat, I'll have to slam your face into the wall again, and even harder this time. I bet you're still craving that cement taste, aren't you? Look, I'm only gonna say this one more time. Come home gather your belongings, and move out of our house. This house is for me and Andrew. You have no place here. Fine. I have no intention of staying with lunatics and narcissists like you and Andrew any longer. I'll come back in a few hours to pick up my belongings and never come back. That's the spirit? Oh, remember to put on the mask or something when you get back. You know, you already look ugly and stupid, 
and I'm sure you'll even look even more ugly with all those scars and stitches that I gave you. Remember that once you're gone, don't ever think of coming back. I don't want to see or hear from you ever again. Darcy? Hello? Darcy? Are you there? I know you're there. Stop ignoring me. Phoebe? What else do you want? I already packed all my things and moved out of the house. Why did you move out so fast? We didn't even have time to say goodbye to each other. Darcy, can you please move back in? Now I really miss you. I don't know what I would do without you. Oh, wow. Now you're claiming that you actually miss me? What a sudden change of heart. Perhaps you should have considered enrolling in some acting classes beforehand to perfect your dramatic skills. Darcy, this is no laughing matter. Stop being so heartless. And why so? Well, I recently found out that everything you told me was true. Your brother has been arrested, and they are demanding a large sum of money for compensation. I seriously don't know what to do right now. Can you please do something to help us out? Really? Last time I checked, you were busy accusing me of being a liar, forcefully introducing my face to the wall, and oh so generously kicking me out of the house. Now, in a stunning turn of events, you come crawling back and have the nerve to ask for my help? My, my, how much more pathetic can you possibly become? It's truly a marvel to witness. What? Oh, how could you use that tone to talk with your own mother? That's so rude of you. I didn't raise you to become like this. I know that your job pays you well, so why don't you give me some money to help your brother Andrew? Oh, so now I suddenly have a job? You called me a parasite, remember? I tried to tell you that I'm just on maternity leave, but you refuse to understand. I know, I know. Don't be such a nitpicker. I must have misread your text, and I'm sorry for that. But isn't it even important right now? Shouldn't we be focusing on finding a way to help your brother other than engaging in a meaningless argument? Your brother is at wit's end, and he really needs your help right now. Surely you're not cruel enough to turn your back on my poor Andrew when he needs you the most, right? He's such an innocent little boy who doesn't even hurt a fly. I doubt that he'd hit someone so hard that they had to be hospitalized. Maybe it's just a mistake. Oh, absolutely. It's just a complete accident, isn't it? Andrew should have been sued for a far more severe punishment than what he received. What should we do to help your brother out? I seriously don't have any clue. Please help us, Darcy. Well, there is a solution to the mess Andrew is in, but I don't know if you'll agree to it. Of course. I'll do whatever it takes to assist my son even if it means putting myself in harm's way. Just let me know what needs to be done. Wow, you really have a blind love for your son, don't you? Here's my plan. Since the house was given to me and Andrew as an inheritance after Dad passed away, why don't we sell it and split the proceeds? This way, you'll have the money to pay for Andrew's compensation, and I'll get my fair share of what I rightfully deserve. Are you nuts? How dare you suggest that I sell the house? Where do you think I'm going to live then? Do you want me to end up homeless? Oh, don't you worry about that. You already have a perfect and new accommodation lined up for you, which is... The prison! Ta-da! I heard the facilities are great. You'll have a nice comfy bed, delicious meals, and make lots of new friends. Of course, I can't guarantee that all of your new friends will be nice. Some of them might be a little more violent than the others. <laughs> what are you saying? Why does prison have anything to do with me? I'm totally innocent. I don't know anything. I haven't done anything wrong in my entire life. Oh, really? Did you hit your head and forget everything? Need I remind you of the time you literally slammed my face into the wall and gave me serious injuries? Well... I already pressed charges against you for assault. Don't worry, you'll be reunited with your son in jail soon enough. I'm sure you're dying to see him again, aren't you? What? How could you possibly do such a thing to me? How could you be the one to put your own mother behind bars? 
This is not how a daughter should treat her mother. Not at all. Have you ever considered the immense challenges and sacrifices that come with being a mother? Do you have any idea of the hardships I endured while raising you? I never even asked for any compensation for all the difficulties I faced during your upbringing. And now here you are, turning against the very hands that nurtured and cared for you. What an ungrateful child you've become. Now you're pulling the enormous sacrifice card, huh? Give me a break. You were just playing favorites and blindly believed everything Andrew told you. No matter how nonsensical it was. You conveniently disregarded everything I had to say. While taking Andrew's words without question. You treated me like I was some kind of plague. And you even brutally abused me. And now you're here asking me to appreciate your enormous sacrifice? Please, spare me the sob story. You're not fooling anyone. You're going to jail, and that's not all. You'll also have to pay damages for all the suffering you caused me. Both mentally and physically. What? Pay damages? Seriously? Putting me in jail isn't enough for you? I've already consulted a lawyer, and I have every right to do so. I don't think it will be that difficult, right? After all, you and Andrew will get some money from selling our house. So I think it should be enough to cover the compensation you owe me. See how I cleverly planned it all out for you and Andrew? I'm just making sure that you both go to jail and are penniless even after you get out of it. <laughs> no, no, no! You can't do this to me! You can't do this to us. My son is a great kid, and he deserves all the best things in the world. He may have acted impulsively, but that doesn't make him any less of a good person. He has a bright future ahead of him with a promising career at a large company. You can't ruin Andrew's life like that. We've come to this point, and you still believe what Andrew told you? He was just a temporary cashier at a supermarket. And what's even more comical is that Andrew couldn't even hold that job for long. Anyways, I don't have time for meaningless arguments. The time is up, and I think the police will come for you soon. See you in court, my wicked mother. And this is the last time I'll call you my mom. Oh no! Please, Darcy, I beg you. I'm not prepared to face imprisonment. I'm still young and have so much life ahead of me. I seriously can't bear to bury my future and my entire existence in that wretched and violent place. It's not fitting for someone of my refined nature. Listen, my dear daughter Darcy, is there any way you could reconsider and withdraw your charges? I promise I'll change my ways from this moment forward. I'll treat you with the utmost care and dedicate all my time to you. I'm willing to do whatever you ask, even if it means humbling myself and kissing your boots. Please find it in your heart to grant me this mercy. Stop with this pitiful act. You're simply making a mockery of yourself. You should have considered the repercussions of your actions beforehand. It's far too late for apologies at this point. Don't fret. You'll have ample time to defend yourself in court and present your case. Shortly after Andrew's arrest, Phoebe was also summoned to court. Phoebe was desperately begging for my forgiveness at the trial, but I was determined to say no to all her absurd requests. Both Andrew and Phoebe were sentenced to the maximum extent of the law and incarcerated. After selling the old house, I used the proceeds to secure a fairly decent apartment, allowing me to start a new chapter in my life. From this point forward, my sole focus will be on myself, my career, and raising my precious daughter, Lisa. I firmly believe that with my little angel by my side, I will overcome any challenges that come my way. <laughs>